hard to say that to people like Amerindians. Amerindians have been accustomed to being supported by the great by father, by father forever. <laughs> but you know, every once in a while, they, they realize they're disappointed. They, they, they are not going to get that support that they want. Or the funds will come through too late, or the assistance will come through too late, and then they're left high and dry. So the patience and the prudence is undertake those things that you, with your own brain power, person power, can conduct to support. That's scaling down. But rather have them scale down than fluff up with false, with false mm, beliefs about themselves, with false efforts that will only lead to failure when they can't afford failure. And the functional specificity is It's going to be a bilingual setting, no matter which way you look at it. It's going to be a multilingual setting, no matter which way you look at it. And the other language, the other one, except other than yours, the language of intimacy, familiarity, has to be learned. Has to be learned for your own benefit. Even for the benefit of your own culture, it has to be learned in terms of it of knowledge and in terms of relations with other people. Nevertheless, you have to work out a system where even though everyone knows the other language, they don't use it for all purposes. There have to be some functions which is specifically for the threatened language and which you cannot maintain group membership in any other language because the other language is not desired for group membership but for intergroup or extra-group membership. Doesn't mean it's not used within group, but it's not desired for that. It's not desirable for that, for the purposes of language, uh, of reversing language shift. So I've very quickly, perhaps not quickly enough, <laughs> gone through the three major clues. There are further steps. Actually, I have a table of, I don't know, 12 steps into which all these things are, are subdivided. But I thought I'd start off with three to get easily be remembered. Patience, prudence, and functional specificity. Each language has to have certain functions for which the other will not be used. Even though you would like the other, your own language to be used for everything, you have to realize that there's certain functions for which it's not going to be used, just as you're not going to permit the use of the big brother language for certain functions either for maintenance of group membership. That's another part of the question. You want to go to the other part? Um, no. I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to try and uh, let me see if I can throw you off by, uh, sure. uh, by switching gears a little bit. Um, but actually, I want, to, uh, uh, I want to bring up something that we talked about a little bit earlier, but it has to do with this question of a multilingual, a bilingual or multilingual environment. What I want to ask you is, what is the role of the global use of English in the marginalization of minority languages? Is the situation in which learning English is an increasingly common educational goal, is that creating a greater emphasis on non-English national languages since speakers of the non-national minority languages face the hurdle of learning English not through their mother tongues but through the national language? English is a very, is, you know, the elephant in the parlor. You can't overlook that. It's there. And it's a great problem in most cases. It's a great problem because it's more than anybody can cope with. If the French can't cope with English, how is your little group going to cope with English? If the French have to keep English at arm's length, how is your group going to cope with that? And of course, the general reaction to excessive pressure is excessive counter pressure. I'm trying to find a, a midway between that. The counter pressure shouldn't be so great that your group begins to oppress others. I generally think that that's a red flag. That's 
instead of instead of combating the oppressor, you identify with the oppressed. You have to keep the other group at arm's length. And English is hard to keep at arm's length because of globalization. If it doesn't come through somebody else's window, it comes through your own window, through your own door, through your own children, through the parents of the home who are working for the other language. They themselves go to work every day and bring home stories from work. That's what they would tell in, in English. So it's very hard to cope with English. And the, uh, I would say the general experience with that has not been, has not been very encouraging. It's very hard to keep away this 20 pound, 20 ton gorilla. Whether, whether it leads to excessive emphasis on the, on the own language, and I, I, I sincerely doubt that. I know I'm always told I should be afraid of, I'm afraid of, be afraid of what the Moldavians are going to do to the goose. But that's, that's a problem too. But if, if the Moldavians learn to, to, to work with themselves relative to Russian or Romanian, the goods, if they take my advice, will learn how to work with, with Moldavian. I'm not afraid of being persecuted by the goods. I'm not afraid of the Moldavians being persecuted by the goose. Now, of course, every little flea has a smaller flea upon it, which it can <laughs> exert pressure on. But nevertheless, keep your eye on the ball. Your eye on the, the ball is the threat from the big brother, not the threat from the little brother. The little brother has to learn how to live with between his smallness and the obliteration on the other side of it. The, the, the uh, persecution that that little brother can visit on others is regrettable. We all are a combative species, and we have to hurt somebody. That's part of our nature. That's part of our animal nature. But the hurt that the goose are going to do to the world is going to be infinitesimally smaller than the hurt that the 30 pound gorilla, 30 ton gorilla is going to do. Let's keep our eye on that one. Well, I'd like to take that a little bit further, maybe in a slightly different direction. But what I, I want to ask you what then are the options available to a community seeking to prevent or reverse language shift? in an authoritarian political environment, one which is oriented towards linguistic integration, one in which uh, the organs of education and even entertainment are at its disposal, as well as the financial, commercial, and judicial structures, all of them being oriented towards an official state language. It's hard, we know that's hard, but the answer is patience, prudence, and functional specificity. With patience, you won't try to apply all of that simultaneously. With prudence, you decide to defend that which is most defensible. And with functional specificity, you will carve out some functions for your language for which the other one has the least access. The least access is normally family and home. That's where the major strength of most languages in the world exist. They don't all try to do everything to everyone because they can't. And because they have other languages which, which are needed and which are more successfully employed for other things. 